What's going on people, it's your boy Brass Tax in this bitch. Oh yeah, I'm back. Firstly, I want to apologize because usually I upload quicker and, and a lot more regularly and there's a lot less than a week in between certain videos. Your boy's just been busy, there's been a lot going on family-wise and everything, funerals and what have you. So it's taken up a lot of my time uh, in that respect. So, you know, just thanks for staying in there. But your boy is back, yeah? I had Star Trek Beyond for a little while, but I hadn't had a chance to watch it, and I didn't want to do some shitty review without watching the movie properly. Do you know what I mean? Which I have. So, you know, without further ado, let's just let's just get on with it. Don't worry, I'm not going to give any spoilers away or anything in case you haven't watched it yet. When I first watched the trailers of this, I wasn't blown away. I just thought, shit, this looks like... Do you remember Star Trek Insurrection? That movie? I'm like, this looks like that shit. And I didn't like that shit. Yeah? And it feels a little bit like Star Trek Insurrection in a lot of ways. But it's a good movie. The action is very good. The crew at the very beginning find themselves in a crazy situation. They have no choice but to to, to land on a nearby planet and what have you. Things happen over there. Uh, it's it's good because there, there are some... You find certain characters of the crew in situations that you perhaps wouldn't find them in. Bones and Spock spend an awful lot of time together and it's nice to see their interaction. It's pure gold, pure comedy as well. And uh, it's something you haven't really seen before in the new movies. This movie does take place sometime after Into Darkness. Uh, so, you know, they've all gone a bit closer and, and, you know, a lot of the crew members are facing. Spock especially is, is dealing with a situation where he's trying to figure out whether he follows his heart or his head in terms of where his future lies. And there's a lot of nice little things to think about. Now, I'm not going to say much more about the story because I'm not going to ruin it, but the villain, Idris Elba, our very own Idris Elba, when I mean our very own, I mean the UK, he's the man right there. All I will say is, as a villain, he was amazing and shit at the same time. When you figure out why he is the way he is, he's a much more sympathetical villain. Yeah, and in that respect, that sometimes those make the best villains. And I just thought he was a lot more interesting in the last half of the movie for me. And in all honesty, I, I kind of wish that that story started from the get-go so you can see Idris in full effect. Do you know what I mean? So I was a li little let down about that. Otherwise, it's a good movie. My favourite out of the three is Into Darkness. I thought that was an amazing movie, second Star Trek, and this would be third, because I feel this movie is an answer to a lot of the hardcore Star Trek fans. And a lot of the hardcore Star Trek fans' biggest problems was that the first two movies, however good they were, they were more sci-fi action and not really Star Trek. And I do understand what they mean, but this is I, I do think that this movie is an answer for them in terms of the exploration and the whole, whether they should really interfere with the natural swing of things and things they really didn't touch on in the first few couple of movies. So it does feel, and look, the action scenes are fantastic, right? But it really does feel like a feature length Star Trek episode in that respect, because I could see this very easily being on an episode. It does really, really feel that way. And that is a good and bad thing for me. It didn't have the scale or scope of the first two movies, in my opinion. I like it the least out of the three, which isn't to say I don't like it. It's just to say that, you know, I think they could have done a lot more with this movie than they did. That being said, though, it's a good movie. You should check it out. If you're a Trekkie fan, you're going to love it. But the question is, will you love it as much? Sophia Botella, Butella, whatever her name is. God damn. She beautiful. All I'm going to say is she more beautiful in 4K. That's all I'm going to say right now. She she was in Kingsman. She's in this movie. She likes playing those kick-ass chicks. Look, man, I don't know what Captain Kirk playing at, yeah? Because Captain Kirk gets all the panani, yeah? I don't understand. I really don't understand what he's playing at. Yeah, he should have already been with her by now. She was beautiful, and even though she looked like an alien, she looked beautiful. I was turned on. Yeah, she lovely. Yeah, she's gonna be in the new Mummy movie. She's probably gonna be a kick-ass chicken that too. Hope she don't get typecast because that's how it's looking right now. But in any case, she's beautiful. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Boy, if I was Captain Cook, she'd be in trouble. Anyway, that's the review of the movie. Good but not great. 4K Blu-ray. How does it stack up? Firstly, shot in 3.4K. Some scenes shot in 6K digital intermediate. 2K upscale to... Yeah, you know. Sound quality, 
Dolby Atmos sound. It is a good transfer. It is a really good transfer. It is a huge improvement from the 1080p Blu-ray. The HDR does a really good job of capturing colours uh, in terms of the Starfleet uniforms. Uh, they spend a lot of the time on the planet. So, you know, the planet itself is very colourful. So that the HDR really brings that out as well. In terms of the sharpness, it's there. The, the depth is also there. Black levels are very good. There's a lot of detail in dark scenes. And they are a couple of standout moments. One pubic hair away from greatness. That's all I'm going to say. They don't quite reach that point. Yeah, but they're good. I got Into Darkness here in terms of visual quality. And I got Beyond here. And they're going like this every time I think about it. Because I remember the first five minutes of Into Darkness. When Captain Kirk and Bones were going through the, 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 the planet. When they stole something or some bullshit. And that looked beautiful in 4k i've not found anything there i mean there's a lot of things that come close in this one but not quite there uh but overall it's a great uptick in visual quality hdr does a really good job of bringing out the flesh tones the colors the wrinkles everything and yeah it's a very very good release you're going to look at it and you're going to know that you're watching a 4k blu-ray and anyone in the room will you will also know that it's a uh it's a visually upgraded experience from the 1080p blu-ray it's good Perhaps even very good, but it's not great. If you liked Into Darkness and you thought the visual quality of that was very good uh, in terms of the 4K, then you'll definitely feel that way about this one as well. Uh, some things, there are some scenes, it's a little bit inconsistent. Some scenes look fantastic, some scenes look good. But that's not a bad thing in any case, because it's a, it's a great transfer of a movie that you're watching. Is it worth full price? Yes, I guess it is worth full price. If you're a Chucky fan, you're going to love it anyway, and you're going to notice the difference. But it's not one of the greats, but it's a, a, it's, it's a good offering from Paramount this year. Uh, they're doing a pretty good job with the Blu-ray 4K releases, I've got to say. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a good job. I do recommend it. Here's my rating on it. That's pretty much it. I'll try and be a bit more frequent on YouTube. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, you need to energize your ass out of here. God damn it. But only after you hit the like and subscribe button. Anyway, guys, love you all. Take care. <laughs>